Welcome back to INI Studio. Today's conversation is about seeing your artwork. Sounds simple, but a lot of people never really understand their own work or anyone else's for that matter. Um, I remember taking a trip to a museum many, many years ago with two artists that were far more advanced than I was at the time. And I knew that what they were seeing was different than what I was seeing, even though we were looking at the same pieces of art. How could that be? How could I develop my vision? Well, this week I had cataract surgery. Um, so it's very appropriate for the topic of the day. I have always had poor vision my whole life. Suddenly, my vision's 2020 with no glasses. So I do have a, a pair of readers to help me see the close-up labels and things, but um, it's pretty remarkable that I have all of the sudden been given the gift of vision. And I wanna help you with that as well. I also wanna talk about painting in stages. The last time we met, I talked to you about the middle stages, finding the composition, getting out of the hot mess of the uh, very first, very free stages where you're just putting paint down, enjoying yourself without a, a thought then you have to try to hone in on what is this painting about? What's the composition? It does start happening spontaneously. Um, and in this painting, I feel that the composition is definitely developing. Today, I wanna to talk about fine tuning what I see. So let me go over what I see in this composition with you a little bit. Um, we talked about a flow uh, that was kind of like a windswept or a wave or something. It's actually still here, very much, I feel. Starting here and going through the whole composition. So that's the main movement. It's not too fast. It's kind of a slow movement, a relaxed, breezy, uh, not a real strong gust of wind or a real heavy wave, but more of an undulation. Um, now I find this red area to be pretty dominant. It has sort of a canoe shape to it. Um, and I wanna work on that today. I'm gonna talk to you about that in just a minute. I have also introduced a floral element, um, which I have not done often in my cold wax. I do it a lot in my acrylic. Um, here particularly, I love the floral. It sort of reminds me of a calendar. I don't know why. Maybe it's the square around the floral. Um, almost looks like a little chalk mark up here. That was all unintentional. It just happened. Um, so you have to see those things and take advantage of it. So um, how do you learn to see the artwork? Well, abstraction is exactly like realism. You want to establish a foreground, a middle ground, a background. Movement, temperature, time, light, lines, shadows in some case, highlights, low lights, all of these come into play. And most of the time, when I find someone is lost in their artwork, abstraction, it's because they haven't established the foreground, middle ground, and background. So I have a pretty strong background of white or off-white, um, mid-ground of a greenish color. Um, there, here, here, coming forward into the mid-ground, a foreground of the dark red, uh, purplish black, the blacks, they come forward. So you have to, I, I like to liken it to an avocado, sliced avocado. Uh, so the front slices are coming off the canvas towards you. 
then the middle of the avocado is the surface of the canvas here. And the back slices are the space that goes deep into the canvas. Now, a beautifully sliced avocado is gorgeous, but if you mush it all up, you're gonna get guacamole. So what we want is we want the slices. We don't want them mashed up. We want to keep um, constant in our foreground, middle ground, and background relationships, okay? Um, so at this point, there is some work I have to do. I feel that this left side is a bit too noisy. I'm gonna quiet it down a bit. Um, this area here may come out. I haven't quite decided. Um, I have to think, you know, there's, there's some kind of a evenness here, almost a mirror image here, 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 um, you know, here, here. Is it too much of a mirror image? I'll decide. And one way that I decide is I kind of will switch the canvases around to see if there's a better orientation or if I need to make adjustments. You can make adjustments at any time in the painting and don't hesitate to make adjustments. Everything that's underneath the surface is just as important as what's on the surface, okay? So we all fall in love with our marks, but our marks are just as important under the surface as over the surface. They have a way of enriching the painting. So what I want to do today is I want to take this red, which is already fairly complex. There's reds, golds, purples. It's a pretty interesting red. Many, many times uh, colors uh, are one dimensional. And I think that um, you can really enrich in the color and still have it read as red. I'm going to put an orange color, I'm going to put a pink color, and then I'm gonna go back over it with the final coat of red. So our end result is gonna be red, but it's gonna be constructed of orange, pink, and then red to really enrich in that red. This can be done in oil, cold wax, acrylics, whatever you're working in. Um, in acrylics, I would do it with glazing techniques. In cold wax, I'll scrape uh, some color over it and then scrape over that and maybe scratch into that to reveal a little bit of, of what's underneath. It's a pretty interesting process. So let me get my colors mixed up and we'll talk about it in just a moment. Okay, my video had cut out. I don't know where I lost you, but I have my pile of my reds, my pile of my violets, and my pile of my oranges. And I'm gonna mix each one about 50% with the cold wax. <clears throat> it's really nice to customize your colors. I, I know a lot of people come to my classes. I, I do a lot of acrylic. Uh, classes and they'll bring those um, cheap low pigment paints and they squirt them right out of the tube and I, I don't recommend that there's the red there's the toned down orange might have Left that a little brighter. I'm going to put a little bit more of the transparent orange in there. I'd like to see that a little bit brighter. <clears throat> I think I have enough cold wax in there that I don't need to add any more. If you need to, go ahead. Yeah, that should work. And finally, my violets. OK, 
Okay, beautiful. So there's the palette. Let's see what happens on the canvas, on the panels. We're going to zero in on the specific area that I'm working on so I can show you. Now remember, this isn't necessarily about covering every square inch. I'm trying to enrich in the end result. Especially in cold wax, I don't necessarily want everything to look even. I like a little variety. And another thing you might think of doing is scraping down into the white. It almost will look like a reflection down there. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm keeping a defined line up here. Hmm. Now, let's move into the pinks, the violets. If I have a little orange on my scraper, that's fine too. So you can see the orange coming through the violet, how interesting that is. And I'm not trying to do this evenly on every square inch. And I've kind of left this uh, texture white over here, and I might not fool around with that too much. Not at this point. I could go back and fool around with it all day. It's not a one-shot deal. We got many, many shots to make it right. Every mistake you make will turn out to be perfect. Allow the mistakes. Oh, you see already when I have this depth in the middle and the lightness here, it's it's bringing this forward a bit to me. It's giving it some contour, which I like, not quite as flat. If you want to add some light into the painting, you know, you might have to do a layer underneath of white or um, something else to add more light coming through the back. It, it all depends on the effect that you want. Okay, time for red. I said I wanted to end up with a red type of a boat shape. So going back with red. That doesn't mean I have to cover up all the violet or cover up all the orange. My eyes are going to read this as a red boat. And when I analyze it carefully, I'll see that the red is made of many, many shades. And I'll leave intentionally 
some lines of orange, some lines of violet. Um, what also happens at this point, um, I'm flattening out some of the texture that I would really like to see a little texture in some of the spots. Oh, that's nice. See, going back over the top, it just, wow. Really added some this beautiful red. Now, last week I talked about how the painting, when texture is built up, it kind of creates its own texture, like in here. I love that. But if it's not quite enough, let's let's give it a little, let's press in, see what happens. See now, in, in my opinion, that's a little too much. But no, no worries, because we can go back and smooth it out. And uh, we can do that with a scraper, with a brayer, with wax paper. Uh, what I mean with wax paper or tissue paper, you can take the paper. And get some interesting lines. If you use tissue paper, it'll pull up more of the paint. If you use wax paper, less. But go ahead and wrinkle it up, put it down, and brayer. Nice. A nice wrinkled texture. Um, I could take this and uh, I could press this somewhere else on the surface if I want to get some interesting red lines. I'd have to think about that. I'm not quite uh, in that concentrating mode yet, but even these, I want to smooth them out a little bit. I don't like the glumpiness there. That's kind of kind of beautiful. And I'm going to go back over here with my red. Nice. Red boat. Red boat shape, I should say. I don't know that it's a boat. Now, look at that. Look at how the dark made some really interesting lines there. I don't want to lose those. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's all that texture that we built earlier, paying off. See? That's a look of old wood now. And let's go over here. Again, this is one of those areas that I'm not real convinced about that texture there. That's the area that I kind of like to come down in a reflect a reflection kind of a movement. And I'm gonna just press in a little bit here. I don't think I went into this one with the violet. I left it more in the orange little too much again and flatten it out. Flatten it out. Here, cover my tracks. Like a trapper in the woods covering my tracks. Um, I have a division there. You know, I'm going to have to sit back and evaluate. From up close, it looks pretty good. I don't know what it's going to look like when I step back. Visually, my eyes may connect left and right side. I don't really need to spell it out. Um, just like I said, I wanted to leave this white area over here. That's perfectly okay. Your eye will make the connection in the long run. So that's my little demonstration of enriching, enriching the color. And boy, does it pop now. Okay, I think you can see how bright that red looks. 
These are the little touches that make all the difference in the painting. It was a nice color before, but if I do that on everything here, enrich in it, uh, sometimes put a highlight, uh, sometimes a shadow, I can really get dimensionality and um, richness, that word keeps coming up, but it does really make for a rich composition. Very saturated colors next to muted colors equals contrast. And that's what we want. That's what makes people stop and notice your painting in a gallery, in a crowded group show. You want people to stop and look at yours, hopefully buy it. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, so that's it for today. I'm gonna tell you what I say all the time. Painting is a practice. Practice makes perfect. Go to your studio, make art, and make it a daily habit. Okay, see you next time.